Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Your Mark on the World show. I'm your host, Devin Thorpe, a Forbes contributor covering social entrepreneurship and impact investing. Our guest today is Judith Walker, a remarkable social entrepreneur who is working in Africa. Uh, Judith is the chief operating officer of African Clean Energy. Judith, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Devin. It's wonderful to be here. We are excited to talk to you today about your interesting work there. You're frankly doing work in a country that, okay, I'm going to expose all of my uh, naivete here, but you're doing work in a country I had not heard of before I met you, uh, Lesotho, <laughs> right? Which is, yes. do I understand correctly, um, Lesotho is just north of South Africa? It's actually within South Africa. So it's an enclave and shares uh, all of its borders with South Africa. Um, but you are not the first that has not heard of uh, uh, Lesotho. Yeah, yeah, with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Well, tell us, give us a quick overview of what you're doing. Well, what we're doing is we're actually manufacturing and distributing a clean cook stove, and we're manufacturing in Lesotho, which is probably what was the first thing that sets us aside. The uh, country of Lesotho is very, very poor. It is an LDC, a least developed country. And uh, there are not a lot of people manufacturing there. So that's our exciting first step. Um, the cook stove that we manufacture is actually a fan force cook stove and it eliminates smoke, which eliminates household air pollution. Yeah, so that, that really is amazing. Let's talk about the problem for a minute. Most people don't have any appreciation for how many people are dying from the smoke created by indoor cooking fires and poor cook stoves. You're absolutely right. It's this huge problem and no one really talks about it because we've been cooking on fire forever. So it doesn't seem like something new. In fact, we kind of romanticize it in the Western world with barbecues and, you know, the smoky fires in winter, but actually it kills more people than AIDS and malaria combined. It's 4.3 million people every year. And that's something that, that I just, I can't accept that. And that's why we're doing something about it. One of the tragedies of this is that people have been working at this now for 10 or 15 years. So people like you, who are savvy, who are knowledgeable, who are concerned about the, the people who are dying from the indoor cooking, have been deploying cook stoves around the world. In fact, I was in Nepal in March installing cook stoves there. Uh, it, it is something that a lot of people are doing, but your cook stove takes things a, a step farther. And, and I point out in the article that, uh, about this interview that the, in Nicholas Kristof and Cheryl Wudun's book, uh, A Path uh, Appears, they talk about the fact that a, a lot of cook stoves aren't getting the in expected results, in part because many cook stoves reduce the smoke in the house, they don't eliminate it. Now Absolutely. your stove is different. It eliminates the indoor smoke. Absolutely. And I mean, that really is what we're trying to establish as the, the bar. I mean, we, you know, we don't have anything against other cook stoves or other companies. Everybody has the same mission. Um, we just, you know, we've come along at the, uh, come along at the right time and we have the right information. And really what it's showing is that some smoke is really just as unhealthy as a lot of smoke. And it can be the difference between two packets of cigarettes a day, which is sort of what children are, are getting into their lungs from open fires to, you know, maybe one packet of cigarettes or half a pack of cigarettes. And none of that is going to be three-year-old. So really eliminating the smoke completely is the only thing that's going to have a significant health impact. And we're actually researching that now um, with a variety of projects, including Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine in Malawi and the World Bank in Laos. They're measuring what what effect it actually has on health to remove it completely in communities that were suffering from high pneumonia rates and lung disease beforehand. I want you to talk about your stove specifically. What have you done? What on earth have you done to make <laughs> it possible to have a cook stove that has no emissions? That You don't attach a, a flue or a, a chimney to, to vent smoke. There is no smoke, right? Correct. I mean, the the science behind it is, 
is relatively simple, oxygen makes fire more efficient. So if you have a continuous flow of air into the fire, you raise the temperature up so high that it actually gasifies fuel. So it turns fuel into a gas that you can then burn off with the reintroduction of oxygen. So it's relatively simple. We have a fan that's driven by a battery, and that fan drives air in two different places in the fire to ensure complete, complete combustion. This is really pretty remarkable. I, I want you to take a minute and talk a little bit more about this, because you can also burn a variety of fuels in your stoves, and it also requires less fuel for the same amount of heat and cooking. So there's a deforestation benefit, I believe, as well. Absolutely. And in fact, it significantly less fuel for hotter and shorter cooking times, meaning you can boil water much quicker with around 70% less fuel than current open fires or rudimentary stoves. Um, the reason why that's really important is not only is it for deforestation and carbon emissions, but it's actually also time and money for the customer. People are spending up to three hours a day just searching for fuel. It takes a lot of women and young girls outside of their villages and into danger, especially in um, areas where it might not be safe to go further away from the village. So it really is this significant pro problem that's actually tying people to the cycle of poverty. It's deforesting four million hectares per year in Africa alone, which is the size of Switzerland, um, and the CO2 emissions are the same as all of the cars and trucks in the world. So it's this huge, huge environmental global problem, and at the same time, the social impact is really what we're, we're keen to fix straight away. Well, this is really e exciting to hear. Now, Let's talk a little bit more. I'm intrigued by the fuel. What are the sorts of fuels that you can use? And what are the most, say, environmentally friendly options that you're making available to people? Well, it'll burn pretty much anything. So we refer to it as fuel agnostic. So any sort of biomass, obviously, we wouldn't recommend plastics or anything like that that's toxic. But corn husks, cow dung, sticks, twigs, but also, and most importantly, as you um, sort of referred to, is a processed fuels, so pellets and briquettes that can be sourced sustainably or made from agricultural waste. And that's primarily important in urban areas where people are currently purchasing fuel. So if they're purchasing charcoal or paraffin, both of which are expensive, toxic, and have a variety of their own problems, we're able to replace that fuel that they're using now with something that's far more sustainable, easier to use, cleaner burning, and, and far, far cheaper, which is so important. Because for us, especially it being a slightly luxury product, um, people will be able to afford it with the fuel savings that we're able to create. So that's really important. So what is that fuel? What is, the, what is, what is it that you're giving them, that you're selling them as the fuel? Biomass pellets or briquettes. And we really aim to partner with local manufacturers products. I mean, throughout Africa, there are small and large-scale manufacturers of, of compressed biomass fuels, such as briquettes and pellets, and really there's a huge potential for distributing these fuels amongst our future customers. That's amazing. Well, Judith, I want to shift gears for just a minute, if you'll, you'll forgive me, to talk about a couple of personal things. I want to get some insights from you as an entrepreneur for, for our audience of entrepreneurs who want to learn more about uh, how to be awesome. So you, you have been very successful and, and you are becoming an icon to so many and, and a role model. Who do you look up to uh, for inspiration? It's funny that you asked that because I actually recently met someone that I really, really admire. Her name is Nelly Cruz, and she's actually sort of the original European power woman uh, in the EU and in Dutch politics. And uh, I, I'll be a lady and not reveal her age, but she's been doing this for a very long time. And uh, she's actually now recently in the news in the Netherlands because she's lobbying to the government to help startups more and to reduce risks for those that are wanting to start new businesses and be social entrepreneurs. So Nelly Cruz is uh, my big thumbs up for, for, uh, for the week because she is just, she is phenomenal. 
Now, that's a great, a great role model, and I appreciate you sharing that with us. Now, as you develop and prove success, it's clear to me that you could be doing anything. <laughs> Why are you doing this? Why are you working in a country that almost no one has heard of and that I certainly can't pronounce? What, what are you doing? What, why are you doing this? Well, I mean, there's several really big reasons. And obviously, all of the issues that I've mentioned already, they're very dear to my heart. It's a family business. So we're together. I think that's really important to me as well. But for me personally, the, you know, I, I'm a foodie. I love food. I love cooking. And I have like all of my warmest and most fond memories of childhood are, you know, being in mom's kitchen and birthday dinners and things like that. And this is this wonderful luxury that I feel so many people are just completely being robbed of because eating and cooking is this daily misery that, you know, finding fuel and finding food. And it's all these things that they they're just not a warm and pleasant experience. And I feel like we can change that. I feel like we can make the next generation so that they can have these warm, fuzzy memories in mom's kitchen and not, you know, be ill or, or, or poorer because of it. No, that's great. I, I, I appreciate that heartfelt logic for uh, pursuing this great dream. Now, f finally, again, I, I want to tap into your, great capabilities, your success, your influence, your impact. Everyone who's watching, whether they be impact investors, philanthropists, uh, uh, social entrepreneurs, what have you, they want to have more impact and you're having real impact. Can you give us one tip, maybe something that you do every day that we can take from you to allow us to have more impact, do more good in the world? Yeah, uh, uh, it's a good question. Uh, so I think it actually allows me to talk a little bit about what I think we we may have skimmed over a bit, which is the fact that it's a real multifunctional tool. And what we did there and, and what I try to do in daily life is look at it from all angles and look at all the beneficiaries and every step of the chain and try and find a way that you can make every aspect of that better. So. In our product, you can see that because it isn't just a clean cook stove. It, it had to have a battery, so we put a USB device charger and a solar, pan, solar panel and a DC port for LED lighting. It's multifunctional, and we're the same as a business in the sense that we're equal opportunity hirers. We hire uh, as many disabled people as we can in, in everywhere that we work. In any way that we can, we try and support local communities, including uh, donating to orphans. And for me, it's this really important thing that I think the world is starting to catch up to. You know, you have a responsibility as a company, but as a person and as an entrepreneur to try and have as much good impact as you can. So if you make that whole process have good impact at every step, like try and find where you can replace maybe a step that you take for granted or don't really pay attention to and see how you can help someone in that step and how you can improve the world in, in that little part of the company. Well, I think that is great advice to look for those uh, opportunities to make the next step because whether we're taking the next step from the last person or the next step from ourselves, that constant opportunity to improve and make a difference in the world is huge. So thank you very much. Now it has been absolutely wonderful to visit with you, Judith, before you go, please tell people, tell us how we can connect with you, how we can learn more about what you're doing and how we can help. Absolutely. So you can connect with me on Twitter at, uh, at Judith Joan Ace. We're also on Twitter as Ace Lesotho, which of course the trick will be getting uh, the spelling right. But AfricanCleanEnergy.com. You can email me at Judith at Ace.co.ls. Lesotho. Um, please do feel free to get in touch. I love hearing from people. I love hearing um, stories of other entrepreneurs and, and how this has influenced you and how it's inspired you. So please, yeah, do, do get in touch. Well, oh, thank you. We wish you every success in the great work you're doing. Thank you so much. All righty. Let's do some good.